Hey everyone, this is Bradley Bush with another algebra video for you. Today we're talking about polynomials and their graphs. Our to-do list, first thing we'll talk about quick review of polynomials. The second thing we're, we will be talking about is the leading coefficient test. That's the focus for today, the leading coefficient test. It's a test that tells you what the behavior of the function, the polynomial will be as you go far left and far right. And then we'll talk about some examples. We'll give you four examples where we use the leading coefficient test. Let's start. What is uh, a polynomial? Let's discuss that. Here's the mathematical definition of a polynomial. It's kind of painful looking, but it really isn't bad. It isn't bad at all. We ha have a bunch of exponents. Those exponents are here, here. There's an implied exponent, a one here. And there's also an implied x to the 0. We know x to the 0 is just the same thing as 1. So that it looks just like I multiplied by 1 there. So I haven't altered anything. But mathematically, it's important for you to see. So we have exponents that start from the highest, which is n, and go down decreasing by 1 until you get to 0. So that means the only possible exponents we can have in a polynomial are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and on. That's it. We can't have negatives. We can't have fractional exponents, positive or negative. We could only have non-negative integers. Second thing is we have variables, right? We have x's. So we've got an x here, x here, x here, x here. And this x is implied, but we don't ever see it. So not a problem, right? We've got x's down here in our example. And we don't see the one at the end. We also have exponents in this example, and they're in decreasing order. We've got an implied 1 right here. And again, we have an x to the 0 there that's implied. So awesome. We've got variables. They've got exponents. We line them up biggest to smallest. The biggest one is 3 in our example here. That biggest one is called the degree of the polynomial. So this would be a third degree polynomial or a polynomial of degree 3. Um, polynomials are also smooth and continuous in their graphs. What else do we have? Coefficients. We need some coefficients, right? In our example here, we've got a 5 there. We've got a 2 here, negative 4, and a 6. Those are all coefficients. That's what these things are here, these a's. All of these a's are coefficients. And the number at the bottom here, that n is just a label that tells you it goes with this term. So the mathematical label here is n because this is the term with the n as the exponent. The label for this coefficient is n minus 1 because the coefficient here in the definition is n minus 1. So all it says is that this is the coefficient that goes in front of the x, the n minus 1 term. So the here, n is 3, so a sub 3 equals 5. a sub 2 equals 2. a sub 1 equals negative 4. And a sub 0 equals 6. So that's all. They're just coefficients. All of these dudes are just coefficients. So that's it. And they can be real numbers. There's no restriction on them besides they can't be imaginary. That's it. That's your polynomial. That's the mathematical definition of a polynomial. Let's talk about the meat of the video today, the leading coefficient test. So the leading coefficient test tells you the behavior of the function in its extremities, meaning it doesn't say anything. Notice here in the middle of all of these graphs, I have kind of dashed dotted lines. That means the leading coefficient test doesn't say anything about those areas. We don't know what goes on there. And the leading coefficient test doesn't tell us anything about what goes on there. What it tells us is what happens as we go far left and far right. So far far right is this way, far left is that way, right, on, on the graph. So that's what it tells us. That's what the leading coefficient test tells us. And there are two things we look at. The leading coefficient test hinges on two things. It hinges on, one, what the degree is of the polynomial or what the highest exponent is. That's the n we discuss here. 
and the end we discuss here. And the second thing is the leading coefficient. So this constant or that coefficient, the number in front of the term or the x with the highest exponent, that's called the leading coefficient. So the leading coefficient, that's the second thing we look at. Is the leading coefficient positive or is the leading coefficient negative? And we're, that's really all we're doing. We're looking at whether or not the leading coefficient is positive or negative. So we look at whether the highest power is even or odd, and then we look at whether the leading coefficient is positive or negative. And that tells us everything. That gives us four different options, and we can just go straight to what the graphs are in the examples. So let's look. Say, for example, uh, we first look at the highest power. What is the highest power? If the highest power is odd, we're in this left side. If the highest power is even, we're in the right side. And then within each category, so say we're within the left category because we looked at the highest power and it was odd, then we've got two choices. We have um, the leading coefficient is positive or the leading coefficient is negative. So that's it. We do that for both of these and, and that's really all we're doing. So let's check it out. Say we have, for example, um, x to the third plus 2x squared. That's our first example we're checking out. Well, we look at the end first. What's the highest power? The highest power is 3. 3 is odd. That means we're here in the left category, right? And by the way, these examples all line up directly below the one they follow. So that should be easy to, uh, to follow along with. So we have an odd power is the is the highest power it's odd good and what's the leading coefficient the number in front there's an implied one here and one is positive so we're positive and we're in the left category because the n is odd so what does the leading coefficient test say our function should do it says our function should rise to the right and fall to the left. And does that happen? It does. It's falling to the left and it's rising to the right. So perfect. What if the leading coefficient is negative? What if the leading, leading coefficient is negative? Well, what if we have a function just like negative 2x to the fifth? 5, the power, the biggest power here is odd. So we're still in this category. But look at the leading coefficient. Leading coefficient is negative. So we are in this category leading with the negative leading coefficient. Well, the test says it should fall to the right and rise to the left. Is that what happens? Indeed, it does. Rises to the left and falls to the right. Great. Well, what if we have, we've moved, we're moving away from odd exponents, and now we're going to the biggest exponent being even. So check out these exponents. We've got two examples here. We have a 2 and a 6 as our highest exponents on these two examples. So they're both even, right? Now we just look at the coefficients. Are the coefficients in front of those terms positive or negative? Well, the first one here on the left is 3, and 3 is a positive number. So we're in this little left category of the right side. And the rule says that we will go up to the left, rise to the left, and rise to the right. And is that what we do? It is indeed what happens in this function. Rises to the left and rises to the right. Well, what if our leading coefficient was negative? Like in negative 4 here in our function, negative 4x to the 6, negative x cubed plus 3x squared. Negative 4, that's obviously a negative number. So we're in the negative category of the right side so what does the rule say we do it says we fall to the right and we fall to the left is that what happens we're falling to the left and we're falling to the right so it works it totally works so the leading coefficient test tells you the behavior of the function of the polynomial in the extremities meaning the far left and far right it doesn't say anything about what goes on in the middle but that's it simple test 
fairly simple way to follow it. If you enjoyed this video, if it was helpful, subscribe to the channel and enjoy your day. Thanks for watching.